In this video, I'm going to show you how to improve your EMQ or event match quality score. So what is this and why is it important? So an EMQ score or event match quality score is how Meta is going to determine how much compliant data you're sending back from your Facebook pixel and conversions API setup. And this is going to help them match a user that's actually taken action on your site with an ad click that's happened on their platform. So why is this important? Well, basically, if you don't have this in place, then Facebook is going to struggle to match the people that, that they are sending from an ad. So when someone clicks on an ad, a little event happens and they can track that internally. But then they also need to know at the other end of the, the kind of process whether that person has taken an action on your site. So if you're optimizing for a lead generation campaign or perhaps a purchase conversion campaign, they need to know that someone has become a purchase and become a lead. And that is all done through the Facebook Pixel and Conversions API setup. But your event match quality score is kind of layered over the top of that. And when you send back compliant user data, it can actually help match those individuals to individual Facebook accounts. And this gives a stronger signal because not only does it tell Meta or Facebook, look, we've had one lead and it came from an ad, they also know who is the lead. And then we can track that or the, the platform can track that back to the individual that clicked on an ad. And that can help the system find more people who are similar. So very similar to like a lookalike audience in that kind of like, a good way to think about it, similar to a lookalike audience in the sense that let's say you've got you know one person that's achieved the result you want or 100 people or 1,000 people that have achieved the result you want. Well, Meta can use that data if it knows who they are to find more people similar without us having to do anything like a lookalike audience. It's just doing that as in that's how the system works, just taking that data and it is using it to find more similar people. And the way that we can see if we're sending back this compliant data to help the, the system optimize is by looking at our EMQ or event match quality score. So this video really sits into the, the sort of category of tracking, pixel setup, conversions API, all of that good stuff. And this is a bit of a more detailed video on how to improve that EMQ score variable and it's gonna really help. Now, before I get started showing you a few examples of how to do this, just one quick thing I wanna say, if you need help setting this up, be that just your pixel tracking, the EMQ score optimization or anything like that, um, just click the link in the video description. You can book a call with me and I can actually talk to you about how to do this and help you on that process. So just get in touch, we can help. Now, let me jump over to my events manager here. So I'm in the uh, Meta Events Manager. I'm just gonna show you what EMQ score actually is. So if we have a look at these events over here, um, we can see all these ones that the pixel sending back. And one of the ones I wanna look at is schedule. Okay, so if I click on this, um, first of all, before I even click on it, we can see a few things. So we can see here that we have an EMQ score. Okay, so this event match quality, this is what I'm talking about, this is EMQ. So we can see that there's quite a lot of different, um, well, there's a little bit of difference here between the events. So page view, 6.1 out of 10, schedule 8.8, .8, submit app application 6.1, and then lead 9.3. Now, just to touch base on this, so, the EMQ score is produced by uh, looking at how much compliant data, like I mentioned, is being sent back to the system. So if I just have a look here at the schedule event, if I click on it and I click view details, and I go down to event quality, we can start to see what data is being sent back. Okay, so in this table, we can see what data is being sent and the percentage of that data um, compared to the total number of events that are being sent back. Now, what I mean by that is, for example, here we can see we've got this 95%, and here we can see this 81%. So we can see here, and also at the top here, 81% for email. So only 81% of the total events that are being sent to Meta are having that hashed email address variable sent, okay? But we can see 100% are receiving the IP address, user agent, things like that, okay? 100% are um, receiving the browser ID variable and things like that. So you can see a kind of trend here. The ones that have 81%, are the other ones that require someone to actually enter details on the site. And that's why it's a little bit lower because there might be some drop off either in the setup or just um, in terms of how it's tracking. So you, you, very rarely you can see 100% for all of these all the time. So this is, we can see this is what we are receiving. Now, if you have a look at your events manager and you have a very low EMQ score and you come over here, the likelihood is you won't have all of these. So you might not even be collecting email address. You might not even be collecting phone number, first name, things like that. And if that's the case, that is actually hurting your EMQ score. We can see here at the bottom, you have these other parameters. So this is what Meta is giving us as some options that we can actually send back if we want to improve our EMQ score. Now, just bear in mind, we have to collect this data to send it back, right? So if we're not collecting, if we, we have like a lead form and we're not collecting things like date of birth, postcode, stuff like that, we can't send it back. 
but that's totally fine, okay? We just wanna work with the data that we have available. And in my experience, mostly it's gonna be things like the email address, first name, last name, phone number. These are like the most important variables to send back, um, along with some of the um, Facebook uh, generated events or variables. Um, so here we can see, for example, on the lead event for this account, if I click view details and I look at event quality, we can see here we're sending back a lot of really high quality data and it's resulting in a very high 9.3 out of 10 EMQ score. So this is how you check your EMQ score. Um, if you don't have one here, like you can see here this event doesn't have one, that's because we're not sending back any compliant data, it doesn't have enough volume to start actually mapping out what your EMQ score is. So you have to send back enough data and you have to send back enough signals enough time for it to start to give you this EMQ score. Um, but you should see it here, assuming you're sending back anything like this through the conversions API. So this is just one more thing to note. If you're just sending back like browser data, it's not gonna work. So you have to have the conversions API to be sending back that server side data if you want to show your EMQ score. Now let's just talk about why something like page view is gonna have a lower EMQ score than something like a lead or submit application. Well, the reason is a page view can occur without someone submitting data. So for me to view a website page, I don't have to give my phone number, my email address, anything like that. So again, by definition, therefore it has less data that we can send back compliant, yeah, in a compliant format um, for Meta to actually match that and therefore your EMQ score is going to be lower and that's totally fine. The ones you want to be looking at is you want to be looking at your EMQ score on your most um, kind of important events, okay? So things like you know, submit leads, uh, so like lead form submissions, submit applications, add to carts, uh, purchases, whatever you're actually optimizing for within your campaigns, that's the ones that you want to be like the most obsessed with in terms of this EMQ score variable. Um, so hopefully that kind of explains what this is. Um, I'm now going to talk about how we can actually improve it. So let's say we have, you know, for example, this is our website contact page, very simple, you know, schedule a call, you can book a time in, and then you get taken to a thank you page. Well. For this setup, I'm using Google Tag Manager. Okay, so I have Google Tag Manager set up, and what I'm doing here, um, I'm using something called Admirai, which is a, a plugin for um, Google Tag Manager to set this up. I have other videos on my channel going through this exact setup, so you can do that. But what I don't touch on those other videos is this, how to pull these variables in and use it for your EMQ score. Um, so with that in mind, you can see that here, because we're using uh, GTM, we're using this setup, we have this option to add custom information parameters. And you can see I have some variable set up. So this is all in Tag Manager and I've got some variables set up here. Okay, and again, there's other tutorials on my channel that show exactly how to do some of this stuff and how to get to the point where you're kind of looking at the screen that I'm looking at now. I'm not gonna go through that in this video. This is a more advanced uh, video specifically about EMQ scores. So um, anyway, we have these variables, which means we're sending back data to Meta with the person's email, phone, first name, last name. So how do we actually get that data into something like Tag Manager? Um, well, one of the ways we can do that is by looking at data that is already collected in something like local storage by the platforms. So a lot of platforms already collect this data. So when you submit like a Go High Level form, um, and this calendar, by the way, is a Go High Level calendar. So on the thank you page, if I just go inspect and I have a look here under application and uh, local storage and I click on my URL, you can see here we get this variable called underscore UD. Now this variable is gonna look different for every single like platform type, okay? So this is just what Go High Level, the platform uses, but it is not to mean that um, this is what everything else uses. And then you can see here, they've got all of these variables that are gonna be blurred out uh, because it contains my sensitive data. <laughs> but this is all stuff that I've submitted um, on uh, Go High Level at some point, okay? So you, my phone number, first name, last name, everything is all there. And what we can do is we can actually use this. So as I go through the contact form and I, and I fill in my data, um, when I go to that next page, the system automatically creates this um, variable in local storage, which means that the data is there, but we just need to pull it into Tag Manager and then send it to Meta. And we can do that using a custom JavaScript variable. Again, I'm not gonna go through the exact parameters. If you have, if you're using Go High Level, there's another video on my channel about that. Um, you can also leverage things like ChatGPT to ask it, you know, write me some, uh, write me a custom uh, JavaScript variable for Google Tag Manager to pull in this, you know, this information from this form. This is the platform I'm using, and you know, here it is in local storage, something like that, and it'll kind of help you on your way if you have enough knowledge to troubleshoot. Or again, if you need help implementing it for your specific platform, um, we can help with that process. So please get in touch. But long story short, we're using a variable here that already exists, and that's kind of method number one. Now, Go High Level is not the only platform that does this. There's loads of others that do it. The other approach to take is we need to actually 
do that ourselves. So in some instances, we can't actually uh, leverage an existing variable. We instead need to create a tag on Google Tag Manager that's gonna collect that data and it's gonna send it to local storage so we can then pick it up as a variable. So how does this work? Basically what happens is we're going to select things like the, uh, the form elements. So for example, if I go back to my website and I uh, just go back to the homepage, and I scroll all the way to the bottom and we have a look here. So I have this get insights um, box. Now this is not a go high level form. Instead, um, this is actually a uh, just a standard Webflow form. So if I hover over this, I can see these different input variables, okay? Now, using, again, Tag Manager, I can watch for, the, for these variables to be filled in, and when they're filled in, it can, it can take that data, copy it, and put it into local storage as its own variable. So I'm kind of creating that same situation that I mentioned before when we're using a built-in variable that already gets produced by the platform, and I'm producing it myself using a tag within GTM. Um, again, I'm not gonna show you the exact code to do this or the exact how to of doing it because it's gonna vary by platform, um, but essentially what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be taking things like the uh, element IDs or the element names in your form, and you're then going to be, again, writing some code or getting some code written for you using a platform like um, ChatGPT to essentially give you a, a, a tag um, that you can deploy within your GTM environment that is going to collect that data and put it into local storage. And then you can pick it up very easily from local storage and put it into um, a variable that is used within your meta lead tag. So that's kind of the two main, like these are the sort of two main situations. So when like a, a client comes to us and says, look, I need to set this up. Um, you know, I need to actually have uh, this setup done and they have like a wide variety of different platforms. So some clients will have, you know, like I mentioned, something like ClickFunnels or Go High Level. Other clients might have like a custom site or they might be using uh, Webflow or uh, WordPress or whatever. In many instances, we will then just be taking, but we'll be either writing um, specific code to pull the form submission details, that like the data that gets entered into a form into a, a local storage variable and then we're picking up or if that local storage variable is being produced directly by the, the platform, the tech stack that's being used, we can just hijack and just pick up on that. So a good example of this is um, Webinar Jam. Webinar Jam seems to push that data across into its own variable, so we can pick up really easily. Um, ClickFunnels does not. You have to write a piece of code that can pull that from uh, ClickFunnels. Go ahead level does, so it just depends on the platform. Uh, something like Perspective doesn't, so you have to write the code yourself and pull it in. Um, so that's just kind of a few few sort of examples there. The other solution is to use Zapier. Okay, so I'm just in Zapier at the moment. I've just created a new Zap. And the reason why I'm showing you this is this is another way of getting customer data into Meta using a platform like Zapier. You can also use a platform like Make and there's other alternatives as well. So the way this platform works is it's basically bridging the gap between two uh, tech platforms. So for example here, if I could select a trigger, I could select something like a Shopify order. So in fact, let's do that. And again, Shopify has direct integration, so it's less necessary, but I'm just gonna show you uh, this in, you know, just so you kind of know this. So let's go through um, and we'll look for a trigger that we want, maybe something like um, new order might be good. Let's just search um, new order, perfect. Okay, so that's gonna be our trigger. And once we've set up that trigger, we can actually select here. We can search for Facebook. And we're gonna choose um, Facebook conversions. We're gonna click that. And then we can choose the event we want to um, send back. So let's say we wanna send back a purchase event. And we can then select our account. And we can start to map data from Shopify into um, the Facebook conversions module here. So for example, things that are important, uh, obviously we have to fill in this data, but that's fine. But the things I wanna kind of go through that are a little bit more niche is things like this. So this is this is where we can add the email address and we can map it from the first field. Okay, so we can choose that email address like this. Um, first name, again, we can map. Last name, we can map as well. Okay, and again, you see how it goes, but we can continually add more information. And this information is gonna be what shows on your EMQ score over here. So when you then, if you start sending that data back via Zapier, um, you then can go back over here 
and you can have a look at your event quality and over time you'll see this improve you'll see it will say you know, more a high percentage of these events have started collecting this data so that's how you can do it using something like zapier again that's quite a quick run through but hopefully it just gives you an idea i'm showing you the the overall kind of processes to take if you need more in-depth videos about it or you need help just let me know so that's kind of two processes. The only limitations with Zapier is that if you're sending back conversion API data via Zapier and you're sending back separate browser data via whatever platform you're using, if they don't contain the same event ID, it's gonna cause a problem with uh, deduplication. So for deduplication to take place, you need to be sending back an event ID that is unique and is the same from your browser event as your server event. And you can do this, for example, Eventbrite, they send back um, a pretty standardized event ID, which I believe is the order number. So you can take that order number or order ID, and you can actually use that to send back server-side data through um, Zapier using Eventbrite, and that's quite a good way of doing things. So you can match it that way, but for other platforms where it's like a random string of numbers that's created, and you can't then take that data and put it into Zapier to send back, you're gonna have this duplication issue. So in instances like that, you should just turn off your browser data and rely solely on the conversions API. Out of the two, I would much rather have the conversions API data in place than I would have the browser data. So in that instance, I would use just the um, conversions API through something like Zapier. However, if you can use GTM and do that type of setup, it's probably gonna give you overall a better um, outcome because then you have browser and server side, you're collecting data the way you want to, you have a lot of control, it's very easy. So um, that's kind of how I would recommend doing it. Like I say, there's loads of other tutorials on similar topics on this channel, so please check out those. And if you need help, just get in touch more than happy to help you. Um, we help with both things like you know, the tactical setups of tracking and implementation, and we also help with managing clients to generate the more revenue online. So if that's something you're interested in and you wanna have a, f a future conversation, just get in touch. Thanks very much.